people who do a five by five, just cause, people who don't have a trainer. People do five by five because they want to do sh small amount of reps to get with a higher weight to build more strength, they say, versus doing a three by 12 to build muscle endurance, they say. What's that thinking compared to what's done here? Well, we do that here too. It just depends on how advanced the athlete is, what the goals are. So t tell me again. So you said a five by five. Earlier. Basically Earlier. lower reps, higher weight, and then. That's still kind of high reps, it's 25 reps. Oh yeah. So like if you're talking about a strength range, right? You say that you want to do, I just want to focus on strength. 85-ish yeah. percent of your theoretical one rep max is something that we would work at. Three sets of five in the beginning, then three sets of three maybe as you get even stronger and you have a hard time with motor unit recruitment because you're up near your max end, right? And so maybe it turns into threes and then you have to change the programming up before you plateau. Because you, you'll be like, okay, I'm getting stronger and then I have to be like, hey, okay, we're getting close to this, to this plateau. You want to catch it on the up. You don't want to let it plateau first and then go, oh, hey, Tyler, you've plateaued. Let's change your program. It's my responsibility to go, all right, look, man, we're getting close. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do something to create a new stimulation to disrupt homeostasis in a new way so that you can continue to drive an adaptation. Because if not, you'll just get flat. Or, or, yeah, or go into a detraining and, and actually go down. You know what I mean? If you like fall, in, say you have an overtraining type of situation or you take too much of a break, take too much off or add too much, you can have a detraining or an overtraining incident and then it takes you a little bit of time to recover. Yeah. So the perfect time is to go, okay, we're on our way up here, but oh man, we're getting close to this plateau. Let's catch it on the up. And then, so that's when you would change training. So then you might go, okay, Tyler has been doing pretty basic barbell movements and he's kind of moving into more of an intermediate phase. So then you might do, hey, we're gonna add some five by five or some 12, right? Or some, some different rep ranges of accessory movements but the barbell movements are gonna be the same. You're never gonna have a program here that doesn't have squats, deadlifts, overhead press, and bench press. Pretty basic. That, those are always gonna be there, but the rep ranges might look a little bit different depending on your goal. The accessories will look a little bit different depending on your goal. Maybe your rest times in between your sets will look a little bit different depending on your goal. But those four foundational movements will be in every single program, regardless. And most people, especially like an intermediate, um, lifter who especially who's an athlete is going to have power cleans power snatches most likely too uh to get because we need to get them faster right the velocity yeah. has to be there so that we can get their power number to go up so most most gym goers are pretty they can handle it on their own but it's your responsibility to really take a setback of when they're almost at their peak and reel back and then so they can keep going higher well i get a lot of people that come here that have been lifting weights for a long time and i put them on a novice program <laughs> And s sometimes they're like a little offended, but you shouldn't be. That's good. That means you can PR like very, very frequently. So even if you've been listening for years, you think you know what to do. Right. You don't have to be like shamed of like, all right, you come in here, Brock knows everything. Well, He's going to teach you. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. Let's not get crazy. I appreciate your confidence. But no, like, that's what I was like saying. That's not what it is. Well, for example, you know Cam? Yeah. He looks similar to like a Viking. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. He's a gigantic sandals. sandal wearing. He's like a yeah. He's like a huge sandal wearing uh, Viking. That guy. But he was already really strong when he got here. Yeah. And I put him on a novice program, and he was like, "All right." I mean, he was he wasn't like, didn't, but you could tell it was kind of. He thought he was. He kind of confused him, right? Like, why am I on a novice program? I'm already. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm enormous and really strong. So. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what the deal was there, where he's, like, he's already coming in, he's really strong, but I put him on a novice program, and he added 170 pounds to his deadlift since he's been here. Did you change form? Well, biomechanics, that's, that's a big part, but also the, the way that he was trained. So he's enormous, right? Yeah. He's a phenomenal athlete. So his genetic potential for strength is much higher than most people. So if he came in here and I said, oh, these are your, art, these are your starting numbers, oh, well, you're advanced because you're strong. The, the amount that you can lift does not, is not an indication of how advanced you are as a lifter. What makes that indication? How, what, which one? Yeah. How advanced you are. Okay. What makes... If you're a novice, right, you come in, and I put you on a novice program, you're going to PR every time you come in. Three times a week, you're going to hit a personal record. That means you're a novice. Yeah. 
When that goes to like once a week, once every two weeks, that would be more like an intermediate. And you're in advanced stages of intermediate for a while, right? To be advanced, I have no one here that's advanced. Advanced means that like, uh, for example, take, take an Olympic athlete where they're doing a quadrennial, preparing for the Olympics. They may PR once or twice during that quadrennial. That's an advanced athlete. If it takes you that much effort to PR, that that you're you're Can't really so. really advanced. What's JP? What's JP? Uh, he's he's a beginner, like a beginner intermediate. Beginner intermediate. Yeah, he's like in the first phase of being an intermediate. Okay. Um, and he's strong. Okay. Oh yeah. Like it's not that has nothing to do with it. Well, you know E-Man, the power lifter, yeah. the guy that's Man. brutally strong. Yeah. I just started him on an intermediate program. Which is terrifying because he is really, really strong. Yeah, I see his on the story every single day. But and what's happening? He's PRing. Yeah, so that's gonna suck. Well, so he's not advanced. We know this because how do you take regardless of how much he deadlifts? If his deadlift PR is every week, he's not advanced, and that's really good. That's great news for you as a lifter. If you're already really strong and you're still novice or intermediate, that's awesome. That means you're gonna get brutally strong. So that's great. You know, that's that's good news. So don't, you should be happy about being a novice. And the longer that you can stay in a novice or early intermediate stage, that the higher your genetic potential for strength is. If you can deadlift 600 pounds and you're an intermediate, good for you. That's awesome because you're going to get really, really strong. You know, and that's kind of where he is. I mean. Emmanuel lifted 606 at his last competition. He weighs 174 pounds, I think is what he weighed in. And he deadlifted 606. Yeah. That's really strong. But he's PRing all the time. So an is really good that strong foundation to then move to intermediate. intermediate. Foundational strength. It doesn't matter where you start. And it's not just skeletal muscle. You're talking about proper biomechanics. You're talking about connective tissue. It has to be stronger, it has to be thicker. Your mechanics have to be right because if you take someone who's already really strong and their mechanics are terrible, but they can move a lot of weight, well, they're only gonna, they're only, they're gonna end in the intermediate because there's gonna be an overuse type of injury. It's like repeated use with bad form. So you, sometimes you have to kind of bring them back a little bit and go, okay, well, like this is the right form. This is gonna keep you from getting injured. Let's stick with that. And then they build back up off that proper form. And then the next thing you know, they're way stronger than they were even with the bad form. So it's just a process like that. You can't skip steps. And it's it's really easy to want to do that. And to get advanced. I want to do all the accessory work. I want to do whatever. You hear it a lot with bodybuilding. Oh, I'm doing Ronnie Coleman's program. Like, oh my God, why? He's he's like the greatest of all time. What, what makes you think that you can do that? Like, it's going to be a problem. Same way, you can't just come in day one and be like, hey, I want an Olympic weightlift. It's my first day Olympic weightlifting. I'm going to do the Bulgarian squat system. Like, you're not squatting maxed out every single day you're not going to do that you're never going to make it you're going to overtrain you know what i mean so that's that's the uh where people kind of run into problems they think that just because it's working for some olympian that they should do it and they're, they're not an olympian yet maybe you're going to be but like you can't you can't skip to the to a training that's that advanced because you're not advanced yet and some people that are very strong they think that they are advanced and i get it because you're stronger than everybody else like Emmanuel is stronger than everybody. That weighs 170 pounds. Pretty much. Pretty much any gym he goes to, he's going to be the strongest dude there. Under 200 pounds. Most likely. Now, the, I mean, there are stronger people than him, for sure. But for the most part, like, he's probably feeling like, you know what, I'm pretty advanced. And, and he's not. So you can't treat him like he's advanced, because then I'd be holding him back. So I, we, we fix some biomechanical stuff. Put him on a program that's appropriate for his level. And now he's getting brutally strong. If you were, there's no, there's never a time frame to novice, intermediate, and advanced. All right. And but your compliance rate, if you never come in, right? Like some people just, <laughs> they're once a week or it's like, oh, come, when are you going to change my program? Like, do I, let's say the average here. Yeah. Is, is there even an average of from like when, when you started in January going hard yeah. with JP coming in yeah. and new members showing up like Brock over here. Oh, yeah. What's up, man? Nothing much. Brock How's it going? What's up, dude? Do they stay in a novice? 
it, well, so I can give you like a, a range, right? So like if you take a brand new, and here's kind of how the range will play. If you take a brand new person, a couch potato for 30 years, never worked out a day in their life, and they come in here and say, I want to start strength training, they will be able to stay in the LP, like the, that linear progression novice stage, that very beginning stage, for a lot longer because they, have done, they haven't done anything. So like it's all brand new to them. So they're learning everything at once. They've never lifted heavy before. Maybe you've lifted heavy, but you've not done it with this structure. Had an injury that you have to learn. Right. There was none. Of, there was not, They're just like, I just got off the couch. I don't know what's going on. Let me. Yeah. So sometimes, like you know, it's eight, nine weeks sometimes, which is a long time. For the most part, like if you came in here ballparking, maybe six weeks would be great, because you're talking about you'd be PRing three times a week. So a lot of times on the LP, I mean, you're talking. Uh, I mean, these guys are adding. 100 pounds to their squat and deadlift a lot of times in a month or six weeks like it's really they're, they're able to yeah like now we have proper form and i understand what's going on and i'm i'm utilizing the stress recovery adaptation cycle so like that they're they're lifting they're not overtraining. they're doing the right things they're lifting uh they're following that structure the stress recovery adaptation cycle of how the, it works so they're like okay i'm doing that we talk about their nutrition and then they're coming in here and they're using proper biomechanics and they're getting really strong. So the baseline is then like, okay, now your baseline of strength is up here. Now we can get more specific with your goals. What do you wanna do? Well, I wanna, you know, I really would like to uh, work on some aesthetic stuff. Okay, you know what I mean? Then maybe it's a functional bodybuilding program. If you're like, you know what? I really like this. Like, I think I'd be good at this for sport. Maybe I wanna be a powerlifter. Or maybe I wanna start trying this Olympic lifting stuff. Or hey, I'm a baseball player. I wanna get better for my sport. Or like the net. Um, Lou, they just want to have a right. have strength. I, I want to be independent. Yeah. I want to be able to go to the grocery store. Like it's it, it's all the same though. Strength is for It literally is for everyone. Yeah, that's not just a a catchy slogan. Like it actually is. So you know. And that's uh, what a lot of people might get coming here. They think it's you got JP, you got big big guys. Yeah. You might not know what's behind the scenes, but. You just introduced him to sweet old Veneta. Oh my God. I yeah. fell in love with it like the second day. Yeah, she's awesome. And it was like awesome. And then you got Lou putting in testimonials. And yeah. she's just, her story's awesome.